Okay, here we have the Daisy 717. And I have had these types of pistols back to about 1987. When I was a kid, I really wanted one of these. But uh, I had to wait till I got older so I could afford to buy one. And I think at that time, I think I was buying these at about maybe $60 or something like that. This one, um, th there's another one called the 747, and I show you in, a, in another video what the differences are. But uh, the good news for you guys is that the 717 is perfectly capable of doing what the 747 does for a lower price. Um, the only difference is, is the trigger and the barrel that I get into that and in some other videos. So what I wanted to show you is when you're doing a long range accuracy test, the way you want to do it is you want to match you want to match that front blade with some kind of target that's exactly that width. So this here is a black square and what I do is I use this because when I put my front sight under here it's good reference so it <clears throat> keeps me steady so that I don't sway back and forth. Now if you had a larger target than this and let's say your front sight was only this big you see what happens is you don't have reference. So what you want to do is you want to match the front sight with the target that you're shooting at any distance. So you're going to have a black dot or a black square here and this is your front sight. So I'll show you what that looks like on paper here. And this is just for accuracy purposes, just for testing to see how accurate the pistol is. So whether you're at 25 yards, whether you're at 40 yards, you want to cut out a black square that matches that front sight. And then all you have to do is mate that up when you're aiming, uh, set up a bench rest type thing. And then these two, you just want to have level with everything else like you see it here. So that's what you want to do for the accuracy test uh, to make sure that uh, you're doing all in your part to see how accurate it is with just the sights alone. Now, the only limitations of this uh, pistol is really your eyes. The old saying is, is if you can't see your target, chances are you're not going to be able to shoot it because you can't see it. So, so once again, here we are at 25 yards and here I am with another black aim point right here. Make sure it's nice and wide. And here's the grouping right here. These two right here is uh, a half inch at 25 yards with two shots. And the other one went off a little. This is the R10 pellet. It's a seven grain pellet. And the elevation is set at eight. And I'll show you that later. And then here it is doing it again, because just to make sure it's not a fluke. Uh, this is just a three shot test, I believe firmly in a five to a 10 shot test, but I wanted to see if I could do it again. And sure enough, here it is again half inch so let me show you what that looks like here and that's pretty dang accurate uh, you have to admit just for sights no scope no red dot nothing like that just the factory sights so there there it is your 717 will do the same thing so anyway uh, I can show you the 40 yard shots here but before we go into that I want to show you something about the settings here now, in the back here, in the back here, the rear sight, there's little notches right here. And I never go down to the last notch for one reason, because on the top here, you can get it so high that it starts to have play in it. You can see there's a little bit of play there, and then that spring can pop out. So you don't want to max it out too far. The other thing is before you get committed to shooting a long shot, you want to you want to take your finger and move the top here, either left or right, and get committed to one side or the other. Because if there's a little play in there, that could cost you an inch or two at, at 40 yards. So what you want to do is, so what you want to do is move it this way or move it this way, and just get 
committed to keeping it there. So don't touch that when you're pumping. Also, when you're adjusting the windage here, it's important to, to push on it with your thumb first and then adjust it because there might be some slack in there and you don't want any slack because when you're pumping it, it's going to move around and it's going to throw your shots off by an inch or so. And I'll show you why this is important because these 40 shot or 40 yard shots are fantastic. I'm going to show you them right now. So let's get to the 40 yard shots. And this is a perfect time for me to explain to explain ballistic coefficient to people. When you have two pellets that are the same weight like I did here and one's a wad cutter and one's a round point the round point is going to uh, hold hold a lot of its speed more than the wad cutter will and that's just pretty much because of the shape so round points have a better ballistic coefficient than uh, wad cutters about double so if a wad cutter is point zero one zero uh, a, a light round point would be about uh, point zero two zero so what we're going to do is I'm going to see which one here I want to show you first. So yeah, let me show you the wad cutter first. So here we got the wad cutter and this is a long shot. This is 40 yards. And at 40 yards, uh, you can see I've got uh, a two inch five shot group here. And uh, what's good to do also a lot of you guys is there's kind of like a cardinal rule with shooting pellets uh, whenever you switch pellets you want to shoot a few through first or after you clean the barrel you want to shoot a few shots because you have to follow the barrel a little bit sometimes to get accuracy so remember to do that you don't just start on a clean barrel and start shooting because your shots are going to go wide so you want to follow the barrel up uh, once again, if you're switching pellets from a wad cutter to a round point, it doesn't matter. When you're switching pellets, you want to fire a few warm-up shots through first so that you can get it properly followed so you can get your accuracy. So here we got uh, a, a two-inch group here at 40 yards, which is pretty amazing for a pistol for the most part. Um, and the aim point was right here. I had this, this black tape right here. And I set my front sight right there, and it landed right here. So what is that? That's that's a seven-inch drop, and the elevation was set at nine. So uh, if you have a little bit of holdover, you could probably hit a pop can at 40 yards for this pellet, this wad gutter. So anyway, here's the details right here. And like I said, you never want to go over max. Now let's compare it to the round nose. So I'm going to line up both aim points so you can see the difference. Okay, so here's the there's the aim point right there. Here's the wad cutter. Here's the round nose. They're both the same weight and about the same velocity. But this one was much higher and that's because it's got a better ballistic coefficient it holds and retains that initial velocity from muzzle so let's go over here let's analyze this one so I was aiming here and I was hitting here at one and a half inch uh, five shot group and not to be perfect or anything but I found that one notch is about two inches. It, it could vary depending on the distance, but uh, one notch for windage that you're going over. So, for instance, to make a correction on this one, after I fired the shot group, I had to go a half a notch this way to center them up again so I could shoot some cans at uh, 40 yards. And if you look at this right here, you can tell that the drop the average drop is three and a half inches so three and a half inches uh, is going to be fine because if you look at a pop can here's a pop can right here um, yeah if you aim at the top of the can you're gonna hit the bottom of the can or something like that so you might you might have to have a little bit of holdover at 40 yards but uh, you know um, you could do it 
Um, there's some guys that do some crazy shots with these pistols. They'll go out to 50 yards. Now, you can go out to 50 yards with like a 5.2 grain Hypermax pellet, which is probably going to land one inch higher. So that pellet will almost come in at smack center at 40 yards. An amazing little alloy pellet, 5.2 grain, the Hypermax. But um, you could take 50 yard shots, but uh, I haven't uh, done it yet. But uh, when you're shooting at 50 yards, um, you might you might hit a few times, but then of course you got to go through the whole routine of sighting it in again. So. But anyway, 50 yards, that's for another time for me. But uh, for the majority, I like the lead pellets, so that's why I'm showing you guys the lead pellets. Um, so we got 40 yards here, average drop 3.5, 5 shot group 1.5 inches, elevation 9 max. Um, so the only, the only other thing i got to tell you about this air pistol is the only limitation, I probably said it before, the only limitation to the 717 is your eyesight. That's the only limitation. And I have prescription glasses. My eyes are not the best. And if I can do this, just think what you guys could do out there online, on the online world. You guys could <clears throat> probably shrink up your five-shot group even smaller than what I got it with some testing, some good commitment to going out there and doing some testing. Now, this... Uh, the 717, when it comes to accuracy, puts to shame a lot of rifles. I mean, look at the length of the barrel. It's it's only, what, about 8 inches or something like that? So that barrel is, uh, is much shorter than a rifle barrel. So let me show you um, the 40-shot group here with a quarter. Look at that. I mean, you tighten them up a little bit, even a, even a three-shot group. You know, you're probably looking at a quarter. And like I was saying, I like to do five and ten shot groups because you might get lucky with a couple shots, but you want to continue shooting more pellets. So this one here, if you look at that quarter, I mean for 40 yards, that's simply amazing for, for a pistol. So what you could notice from this is a Dixie cup, which I have right here, which is about about two and an eighth inch wide going from here not counting the lip and about one and a half on the bottom if you put a Dixie cup on there it's a Dixie cup at 40 yards so that's amazing that's what I was doing with my target rifle out in the yard with a nine magnification scope I did the Dixie Cup challenge with that one, and I was I hit uh, I think I hit almost all of these at 40 yards, but here we have a pistol that has potential, and it's only the limit of what your eyes can see. Now I can't see a Dixie Cup at 40 yards, but I can see this at 40 yards. This larger black piece of tape. So like I was saying, it's only the limitations of what your eyes can see. But if you're doing sight in, I recommend that you sight in first, not by a little cup like this. But I recommend that you sight in the front, uh, the front sight, mating up with the target size, which is out in the field, which is going to be the same as your uh, front sight. So that way, you can get it sighted in perfectly. So I'll bring you to that one more time. That sheet of paper that I have here. So just give me a sec here. You're going to need some good glasses for this pistol because of the fact that uh, when you're checking when you're checking your notches, you can barely see them. So you're going to have to get yourself some of these uh, magnifying uh, glass type things. These are uh, 250 rated. 2.50, so you want to get a good pair, or 1.25, I think this might be 1.25, yeah, 1.25, I think, and what this does is this will allow you to see all them little hash marks, because this one, they are so tiny, you can hardly see them, so you need a pair of them little glasses and some mini uh, 
some mini like standard uh, screwdriver type things to adjust them so um, let me get that uh, sheet of paper and show you what the hash marks look like on this thing and stuff like that. Let's see what we got here. It's also good to to make these type of things. I love these. You can store stuff in them. These little clip folders here where you can put papers and liners in. Um, so once again, here we go with the sights and uh, like I was saying, this here represents that right there. So my front sight is literally at 40 yards. It's huge. It's It looks really big from a 40 yard perspective. So let's go on to the, this is the elevation in the back. And at the elevation in the back, you're going to have all these notches. Now what I do, you guys might be different, but what I do is I don't count that first one because uh, you'll have 11. So so the first one up here you don't count and you just you go all the way down you'll notice that the one in the middle is longer so that's your five so that's that's why I don't count that first one and then down here you see is ten but see where I set it at nine I've got one more and then that spring is just about ready to pop out so you don't want to do that kind of stuff now when you're sighting this thing in what you do for elevation, you can always adjust the windage later, but for elevation what you do is like if you look at 15 yards here for example, I've got a setting for my 7.33 grain pellet at, uh, this is my round nose at 4.5. I got my wad cutter pellet, my uh, hyper, uh, it's called a super mag, RWS super mag 9.3, I've got that set here at 5. And then I got a 15 grain set at six and a half. Now I don't use 15 grain pellets in this that often. I just use them for testing. But I just put that in there just for an example. But uh, I stick with the nine grain and under. And maybe the 10.34 grain JSB or ear arms. I like to do experiments with them for 25 yard shots. So at seven yards now, if you look here, my elevation has to be at 2 for the 7.33 grain, at 3 for the 9.3 grain, and at 4 for the 4, uh, four for the 15 grain pellet. So now I've got this chart and I can adjust everything so that I could uh, have my zero straightened out so I don't have to do any guesswork and keeping on adjusting. I can just adjust it within that range and then I'm all set to go for my zero. So, down here is just kind of like an example for your uh, for the size of black tape that you want. Like I said, you just want to match the black tape with the front sight at any distance. But let's say if you had you had to have a 5 inch square at, at 25 yards, then obviously at 12 yards, which is about half the distance, you'd have to have a 2.5 inch black square. So this is just kind of an example. So. What you want to do is when you're shooting just go out there take a piece of tape like this figure out what size is going to suit you the best you could uh, put hash marks on here for each inch so you can see which target would be the best for you to aim at because you need a good aim point to test accuracy so for instance if you were testing accuracy and you had something this big for instance you know like a bigger target then then your front uh, notch there, then, then what happens is you're off reference, you don't know where you're at. So so once again, I just wanted to mention that. Um, the 10.34 grain uh, Air Arms pellet, it's a good pellet. Let me see if I can find uh, my sheets on that one. It's a good pellet, but since it's heavy, you know, obviously it's going to drop, but I wanted to I wanted to push it to its paces, so I did, and I pushed it to its paces by using elevation 8 on the 10.34 grain. Now this is the 747, but it could be the 717. So here's my aim point once again, and here's where the shots were falling at uh, 25 yards and uh, 2 inch group. I can actually tighten that up to about an inch, I think, usually with the three shot group if I uh, 
follow the barrel up a little and I'm more steady. But uh, yeah, so our drop right here is, uh, what is it? Yeah, that's about, a, that's about a two inch drop or something like that. It's a two inch drop and the group is about two inches wide right here. From here to here is would be probably about three quarters of an inch or a half inch. So at 25 yards and elevation eight, you're gonna have no problems hitting cans. And uh, if you set it to nine, you're probably going to get out to maybe 30 yards at best, and then you're going to have to find some lighter round nose pellets for that. So there's that right there. Um, a lot of people were wondering what's the difference between the suit, the light alloy pellets. What's the difference between the light alloy pellets and the lead ones? Well, we've got a seven grain one here. And we got a, uh, a Hypermax, and like I said, I could have I set the elevation to 9. So 40 yards, and the aim point is this black square, and you can see that, uh, let's see, where is it? Yeah, right there, 5.2 grain RWS Hypermax. So you see the drop there, but uh, like I was saying before, I could have had an elevation of 9. So what that translates to is uh, you would have to set it on 9 for 40 yards. And if you did that, let me grab the 40-yard shots here. If you set it on 9 for the RWS Hypermax 5.2 green, like I was saying before, you're going to be right about here, or you're going to be smack dead center at 40 yards, which isn't which isn't too bad for a pistol to shoot that flat of a trajectory. So, anyway, I'll have more videos on this uh, pistol. I hope I didn't confuse you. I don't really I don't really practice for my videos. I just go right into it and start talking about it about the pistol. So, but. Uh, but you know me, I, I give a lot of details when I can. Um, this pistol here is simply amazing. And uh, I think you guys should invest in one if you're an air gun collector. It's something you want to get a 717 or a 747. Because uh, the only limitations to this thing for accuracy is your eyes which amazes me why they don't make anything uh, that you can mount up here but uh, there is something online called the IHZ or something like that mount for the 717 747 and uh, according to them people they say it will mount on here and you can put a scope on this thing but uh, I mean think about it you know, a little over two inch groups at 40 yards, my gosh, that's that's simply amazing at 40 yards. I mean, a lot of air rifles, uh, you know, with scopes, spring piston, pumpers, and stuff like that. Even some PCP rifles have a struggle at uh, keeping groups like that at 40 yards. Some of them do. And I'm talking a five inch shot group, too. I'm not talking a you know, like a luck of the Irish two shot, three shot group type cloverleaf thing. So I'm talking about, uh, you know, some good amount of shots for your groupings or whatever. But yes, that's the only limitation to this pistol is your eyesight. If you have good eyesight and you pick up one of these and you bench rest it, you are going to have fun knocking out uh, cans at 40 yards maybe even 45 yards with this little toy here so this uh, this is really a lot of fun so and you can see obviously it says if you want to go left you turn that way and it's even got the smaller notches here which lets you adjust it to to even under 1 32nd of an inch and uh, almost like a micrometer type adjustment and that's what I like about this pistol. You can really 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 fine tune uh, your adjustments on this pistol if you have the accuracy. But uh, 
when you're adjusting the sights now, what I recommend is you fire uh, at least three shots before you start playing around with the turret here with your windage and your elevation because of the fact that uh, that one shot doesn't tell you a lot. You want to have some confirmation shots to know that you're sighted in. So if you do think you're sighted in, then just fire three more shots. Make sure they're going in the same place. And then, once you're sighted in on paper first, then go out in the field and have fun shooting cans and stuff like that. So anyway, I got a little target, uh, a little metal plate at 40 yards, and I'm going to take some shots for you guys one of these days at 40 yards and let you hear the, the little clang of the metal when the pellet hits at 40 yards. And I'll be using the Air Arms Falcon 7.33 grain, which is my very, very favorite pellet for this pistol because of the fact that it's very fast, it's got a flat trajectory, it's got a good ballistic coefficient, and uh, it's just kind of a do-all pellet for a low price. So they're about $13 a tin, but at least they're not 16 or 20 bucks a tin for some of the match-grade ones. So, and match grade wad cutters work good in this too. Like you saw um, the JSB match cutters at 40 yards doing two inch groups. Well, the thing you guys have to realize too is that wad cutters really are insanely accurate pretty much for close distances. So I'm even amazed that that wad cutter did that well at 40 yards. Um, but the reason why it did very well at 40 yards is because of the speed was low enough so that it had some stability. Now if you fired that same pellet out of a like a thousand foot uh, thousand FPS rifle or something like that if you get that wad cutter going too fast you're gonna have lousy groups because wad cutters are speed sensitive so you gotta have the right speed for wad cutters to make them work right. So speed and distance is pretty much paramount for any uh, pellet to work good you have to investigate and try different distances and you know this is a single pump but if you have a multi-pump pistol like a Crossman 1377 it's good that you change out your pumps and your distances and investigate and find out which pellets work and which pellets don't at certain distances but but anyway thank you very much for watching the video so I'll probably do uh, some more on this but but be sure to check my video out about uh, the 717, 747 differences. I've got that little slideshow video there. And it tells you about uh, the trigger, the barrel, and stuff like that, what's different. Thanks for watching, you guys.